you get the record deal for your singing and you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm, now I want to be a rapper. Like, oh, that was an accident. The rapping thing was a complete accident. Because you're great at it. Oh, thank you. So how did you, t- what do you mean it's an accident? <laughs> Uh, nice to meet you. Thanks so much for coming in. Nice to meet you too. My, uh, so this is we're, we're, we have you. We're happy to have you in here. It's also Hip Hop Week here on our show. Yeah. Um, and we've been talking about like some of the pioneers and some of like the influences uh, over the years. And my understanding, if you could tell me about this, is Missy Elliott is the big influence on you. Oh, absolutely. I'm obsessed with Missy. Like her, just her whole style, the way how. She she brought innovation to hip hop as a woman, and it's like the most incredible thing I've ever seen. Where when, when did you hear her first? Um, I was in Nashville, Tennessee, and I believe the first song I heard from her was um, "Get Your Freak On." Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, on MTV or something like that. Yeah, MTV Jams. Is there a, you watch that and you think what? One, the beat caught my attention, and then like when I saw the visuals, I was like, who? is this because like i didn't know who she was before that and i wasn't really heavy into um, into music because i don't know i don't even know i was young yeah but when i did see her I, something was just so cool about her and i like i just kept up with her ever since did you feel like that was an inspiring thing like oh i want to do that that kind of thing at the time no i didn't i didn't think that like i wanted to be a rapper at that age but i did find it interesting i knew i wanted to be a musician but i thought i was going to be a singer yeah not a rapper yeah, I mean, we're going we're gonna to talk about that in a yeah. second. You mentioned you were a natural. So you're, you're uh, born in Zimbabwe, is that right? Yes. Born in Zimbabwe. Where in Zimbabwe? In Harare. In Harare. And then you moved to Nashville when you were... Um, well, actually, we moved to Chicago first. Uh-huh. Um, we stayed there for maybe like six months. And then we moved to Michigan. And then we moved to Nashville when I was about, I think, seven. What, what was it like living there? It was cool. I loved it. You know, like, I, I love the South Side, the country side of things, you know, like, something about that Dirty South did something to me. Strong tradition of Southern hip-hop, especially around when you yeah. were there at, at that time. Yeah. Did, you, was, did any of that get in there? Oh, absolutely. I was obsessed with, you know, Lil Scrappy, Lil John of the East Side Boys, Juvenile, you know, all those Dirty South, um, 3-6 Mafia. It was just, it was, it was a lot. Were your parents cool with that? No. Are they uh, like God fearing folks or something like that? Yes. Yeah. As, and like my my mom, not really. Like she, yes, she's God fearing, but like she's more she's more hip to the times yeah. than my dad. He's like such a traditional African dad. It's crazy. So they weren't super into you listening to a lot of hip hop around the house. No. Right. Anything no. that was sort of sort of uh, bad words or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you sneak it? Did you find a way? Oh, to, absolutely. How'd you do that? Um. I think my brothers figured out the parental password once because I think they made it something so simple like one of our birthdays. <laughs> but we just pretended like we didn't know what it was the whole time. But like when they would go to sleep, we would just put the password in launch. You know what? Uh, parents listening to this, make don't make the parental control <laughs> password your children's birthdays. My mom's watching. She's in the green room right now. I'm oh sorry, my mom. Is she I'm really so in the green room right now? <laughs> yeah. She, does she know about this? Uh, she does now. She does now. <laughs> um, when you So then you moved to Canada when you're how old? Um, I think I was 11 or 12, I think, like around there. And and my, my understanding of it, and I want to talk about this as much as you want to. Yeah. When you, you and your family came to Canada, yeah. you sort of fell under hard times. Yeah. Um, it was good for, like, when we first got here, everything was pretty good. Um, but, you know, there's things happen. My dad lost his job. Oh. He got laid off. And then that's when it kind of got really rocky for us. What was he working on? He was, um, do, he does accounting. So, like, he was just at a, at a firm, like, an accounting or whatever. So, he, they ended, I guess they were doing layoffs. Um, and then from there on, like, it was just hard for him to find something else. Yeah. So, like, yeah. It you, was a little, a little you, rough. You, so, what happened to you? What happened to me? Yeah, what happened to the family, did you well, guys? Oh, oh. Um, so at the time we had a house, but like obviously, like because my dad lost his job, he we just ended up losing our house. Yeah. And um, ended up in a motel. Yeah. All like six of us, and it was me, my mom, my dad, and my three brothers, and it was not fun. I mean, it was yeah, it was pretty sad. <laughs> pretty sad, eh? Hey? Yeah. And my my understanding of it is that you start to see music as sort of like 
I don't know if it's a way out, but a, a way of like achieving some kind of stability in, in this life. Yeah, absolutely. Um, See, I was always like musically inclined. I started playing the piano and singing when I was eight. And my parents always fostered that in me. But for some reason, I just wasn't feeling it that much as I got older. So I stopped. But um, when we were in that situation, I was just like, OK, maybe I should like take my because I, I was only like, what, 17. I'm like, there's no job I could freaking work right now that could really make a difference. But like. I was like, what if I like get back into music and use my talents to get my family out of the situation? And that's when I really started to like hone down and work on my artistry. And um, I think there was a day I was just like writing. I was just sitting on the floor writing, and then I went on. Um, I went on Facebook. I don't know if you remember. Like there were times where like there would be events right in the in the margin. It would tell you like upcoming events near you. Yeah. 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 And yeah. then. A uh, one popped up that actually said there was a talent showcase downtown at Lee's Palace. Lee, uh, so in downtown Toronto, yeah, or, like but Bloor and Bathurst around yeah. there, there was a talent showcase, yeah, for for like a for Warner, the record label. Yeah, and it, yeah, it said um the VP for Warner, um the NR was gonna be there, and um they were only had like limited spots, and you had to like submit an audition and get considered for it. So I didn't really think I was gonna get it. I just did it anyways. What did you audition with? Um, I sang uh, "If I Ain't Got You" by Alicia Keys. Jam. Yeah. On what did you re- you recorded it and sent it to them? Yeah. On what your phone or? Yeah, it was just like a, uh, which was just like a, a phone memo thingy. Oh, yeah. cool! So you sent that to them and they say yes. Yeah, I was shocked. I didn't think I was gonna get it. How did you react when you got it? I was beyond ecstatic. I, I kind of felt like because I am spiritual too. I'm very God fearing myself. I kind of felt like that was God's way of telling me that this was my path all along. And it just took me accepting it for it to make sense. You felt like there was this path for you that had been presenting itself to you over and over and over again. Music yeah. had been coming up and you kept on resisting it. Yeah. And you feel like once you started embracing it, the the, the door opened for you. Yeah. You go down to Lee's Palace, mm-hmm. kind of a legendary venue in downtown Toronto. Yeah. You stand on stage at 17, 18 years old. Yeah. In front of the vice president of one of the biggest record labels in the country. Yeah. And... And you, then you sing? Yeah, I sing um One Plus One by Beyonce. Jam. And obviously If I Ain't Got You by Alicia Keys. So you had to jam. I think you had to sing the song you auditioned with as well. Right. So I sang those two. Um I had a pretty good reaction from the crowd. Uh, even though I was freaking nervous. Like I was sweating bullets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it went very well as soon as I got off the stage. Um then the organizer of the showcase, he came up to me, he's like, There's somebody that wants to meet you. So um, he walked me over to like the bar area because I I, I was about to leave because I was underage. I wasn't allowed to stay in there. Right. You had to perform yeah. and then get out of there because. Yeah. yeah. Right. I waited outside for my turn, went inside, performed, and then I had to leave like soon after. So <laughs> um, he walked me over to like the bar area and the air and hours there, Ron. And he introduced us. And since then, like he's always been a constant in my life, even though like things didn't work out the way I thought at first. It definitely came full circle. Can you talk me through that? So you get signed to Warner as a singer, then yeah. signed as a, for the record deal. I didn't get signed when I was seventeen. I just connected with the A and R. We okay. started working together, like develop, like artist development. So when you when you left, did you break a contract? Was there something you know? No, he gave me he gave me his contact information, and yeah. then um he told me like to just reach out to him, and from then on he we were kind of like on emails. He would send me like songs, and then um I go to the studio and like we would work on things, and he kind of helped me figure out who I was in, as an artist because I didn't really know at that time. I had just started doing music again. Yeah. So um. And did you walk away from this at one point? Is that, yeah. That's my understanding of it, right? Yeah. What did, what, tell me about that. Oh, yeah. I mean, after working with him for like, I think we worked together for like two years. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, I just felt like I wasn't ready. I, would, I was in a place where like, no matter how many songs I wrote, there was no... There was no purpose in my lyrics at all. Like whether it was supposed to be fun or not, like there was nothing to my lyricism that I felt like was good enough and strong enough to put out into the world. And I just felt like that had something to do with me not understanding who I was completely yet. You I felt w- like you your lyrics weren't up to your own standard. Yeah. Because you hadn't lived enough life. Yeah. To write but my god, you from what you told me so far, you've lived you, you had already lived quite a life. I I mean I had, but I hadn't really figured out how to weave them together i knew i wanted to do music and i know i had a story but i just didn't know how to merge the two together and um also like 
at the time there wasn't very much representation of of, of girls that look like me like I'm a more curvy yeah. woman, you know what I mean? And I was more curvy girl back then and I didn't see that in mainstream. So I even like, it got to a point where I was so hard on myself, even about like my physical appearance. It wasn't just like the, lyri- the lyrics and stuff. I was so hard on myself about physical appearance and I was going on all these, all these crash diets. And like the last straw was me passing out at school and like they had to call an ambulance for me and my mom thought like, she came she came rushing to it was so scary you you had been sort of starving yourself and yeah you pass out at school yeah like i would work out four times a day and i would barely eat and then like i was losing the weight but wasn't in a healthy way so that day when i did pass out at school and like i remember waking up and like they were taking me to the ambulance and like i saw the terror in my mom's eyes i'm like okay i have to like this is this can't go on like this. I need to figure out who I am, what I really want. Do I really want to do music? And if I do, I have to love myself so that I don't put myself in this situation again, right? So that's when I stepped back a little bit. And what did you do instead? Um, I kind of just lived life, you know. I went, I went to college. I didn't survive. I only lasted like two months and mm-hmm. dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I started doing freelance makeup. Yeah. So, because another passion of mine is beauty. Yeah. Um, so I started doing makeup. Um. Helping other people feel beautiful yeah. that way that maybe, you know, yeah. Yeah, and um, I mean, I had my son in that in that four years that I took my break. So why do you, why do you go back? What, what makes you go back? My son, actually. Being a mom opened up my my mind to a lot of things. I'm just like, I, I the, the kind of, the kind of example I want to set for my son is to like, exploit every gift that God has given you. It's your right to do that and never let anybody tell you otherwise. So like I couldn't really preach that to him unless I was doing it myself because I know he was going to ask me at one point like how come you stopped doing music? How come you quit? You know, and I and like I didn't want that. So I remember there was a day like I was working at Sephora at this time actually <laughs> in the mall? Yeah. What mall? It was Sherwood Gardens. Sherwood Gardens in Toronto. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And um, because I had just started, I had just got like gone back to work up until that point. I was doing a freelance. So I was just going to weddings, you know, things like that. But after starting my job at Sephora, my son started daycare. But because he had never been to daycare before, he started getting sick a lot because he obviously like he was getting exposed to all these things. Right. So yeah, he hadn't didn't have immunity. For, exactly. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. So it was a little bit of a challenge because I did have to pick him up from daycare quite a lot because he was getting sick or keep him home because he wasn't feeling well. And um, there was a day there where I dropped him off at daycare and then I was on my way to work. And then his daycare called and said he's starting to like spike a fever and he's getting a little cranky. You know what I mean? So like I'm like, OK, cool. I'll just come back and get him. So I called I called my um, my manager. Yeah. And I told her what the situation was and I had to go right back home and get my son. And she pretty much was just like, you got to find somebody else to go get him. Like, we need you on the floor and whatever. And in my head, I'm like, you, you are, you must be smoking the drapes if you think I'm going to come into work (laughs) and leave my child at daycare. And I'm like, no, that's not happening. So I quit right there on the phone. Yeah. I made a U-turn, went back and got my son. Yeah. Um, after that, I was just like, you know what? Let me finish. Let me like, let me let me finish with this, and then like focus on my music. And you said, I don't want anyone. I don't want to have to be beholden to anyone, no. especially someone who doesn't understand the good, the right priorities in life. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make my own stuff. I'm gonna yeah. Make my own music. Absolutely. But as a rapper this time, not as a singer. No, it was a singer still. Okay. I did. I okay. was still singing. Okay. Um, and this was like January 2018. Okay. Um, when I quit my job, so I started doing my music. Um, I think I had written maybe two or three songs. You get the record deal for your singing and you're like, yeah. I'm, I'm, now I want to be a rapper? Like, Oh, that was an accident. The rapping thing was a complete accident. Because you're great at it. Oh, thank you. So how did you, t- what do you mean it's an accident? <laughs> okay. What's the story? So um, after I signed my, my contract with Warner, I spent some time in like, again, artist development. We're just recording a bunch of uh, songs and all of them were like R&B, all that stuff from yeah. singing. Yeah. So. There was a point in time where, like, we had kind of gotten through all the vibes that we were thinking. And um, I walked into the studio that day and my producer, um, Michael Lance, he was like, I guess he had made the beat right before I got there. And he's like, hey, do you want to try rapping today? Had you ever rapped? No. Ever? No. Written a rap? No. So did you freestyle? 
no like we sat there and we wrote it together yeah and then like i got on the mic I, even even when we're writing it i was like I'm, i don't know like, but i'll try anything once because you never know what you're good at until yeah. you try it yeah. so when i started recording it i was like oh this is kind of fun and that turned out to be what the label loved no, not just fun you're really good like, did you realize you were really you were good at it right away no I still, I refused to call myself a rapper for the longest time. The longest time. And he, he used to drive my producer crazy. Because he didn't think you were authentic or you didn't think you deserved it or? No, I, I think. I also refuse to call myself a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's just because I, I had this idea that I was a singer. I sing. My thing is singing, yeah. right? So when I accidentally stumbled upon rapping, I kind of felt like. There's people who have been working years doing this. Yeah. I feel wrong calling myself a rapper yeah. by accident, you know? But I I kinda I kinda understood it after a while. I'm like, you know what? I'm just an artist. I rap and I sing. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> well, not just that. Not just that you you are late in life a rapper after all of this story. You're by the way, great storyteller, by the way. Oh, okay. But after all all of this, and then you in the Juno, right? Yeah. So your song Bold wins the Juno Award for Rap Single of the Year, making you the first woman to win it, the first person ever to yeah. win it. Are you aware of the fact that you're making history, like, when that happens? I'm a, I'm aware, but it doesn't, I haven't, re- like, it doesn't register. No matter how many times people say it, it does not register. And I think it's, like, just how things unfolded, because the one I won the award for is the one that was an accident. <laughs> What, what do you mean? <laughs> the song the, that I won the award for. The song for, you won the ju- the first ever Juno for rap single of the year yes, for was an accident. That was the ac- That was the first rap song I ever did. That was the one. Yes. That was the one you wrote with the producer, and you said, "I'm gonna see if I can do this." Yeah. It was bold. It was bold. Yeah. It actually, was <laughs> quite bold. So it was good. It was just like it was nuts. Do you, call, do you call yourself a rapper now if you win? Yeah, okay. I do. I, I've heard people describe your lyrics as like unapologetic. Yeah. Does that, does that does that ring true to you? Yes. I just say what I want, when I want, how I want, you know? I and mean, after you were telling me, not, not to get too real here, yeah. but it's the CBC, I got to do it. Yeah. You were telling me the story of like passing out in school because of like self-criticism and yeah. self-loathing and you didn't feel good about your body and you didn't feel good about the, sy- the expectations that like society put on you. Yeah. And now you're making like, you now you're looking at me and saying, yeah, I, I'm, I'm unapologetic. I'm saying, I mean, that's, that's quite a journey. Yeah. And it, it's, I'm proud of myself because like, I didn't think I was going to get to this place, but I'm genuinely in a place where I'm just like, I really don't care. You know, it's like, it's either you love me or you don't. And it's not my place to make you like me or love you or accept me, but I, I love and I accept myself. So I just do what I want. And I just do what makes me happy. And I say whatever makes me happy. It's, it's, it's so, thanks, for, thanks for your perspective on that. I'll ask you one more question before we go. And it's the question that we're asking everybody on Q who's been on for Hip Hop Week. Yeah. It's kind of a hard one, to be honest with oh, you. Oh, boy. Um, what has hip hop given you? Hip hop has given me the space to be free, to be myself, like, wholeheartedly. I started off as a singer, but it wasn't until I started rapping that I really felt like I could be myself. And there's something about hip hop that makes you want to pour your personality, your character, your everything about you into what you're doing so that people can really understand who you are. And you can also be really fun with it. Yeah, you can have the hard bars that are more like, you know, somber that tell more of a story. And then you can have the bars that just make you want to dance and want to have fun. So, like, I just feel like hip hop has given me the space to really be open with myself and just be myself 100% inside and out compared to anything else I've done. That's a beautiful answer. Oh, thank you. It's be- a- a lovely to get a chance to talk to you. Oh, that was- this is fun. Thanks for coming in. Of course. Thank you for having me. You can keep that mug, you know. Oh, can I? Yeah. Oh, yes. Just don't sell it. <laughs> I won't. Don't put it on eBay. And my mom better not steal it either because she likes collecting You mugs. know what? Your mom, <laughs> mom, better not, your mom better not steal it. Thank you so much for coming in. <laughs> thank you. It's my conversation with Charmaine, part of the new class of rising Canadian hip-hop artists. 